iPhone or a laptop or anything. Just go to this address. TLSSR.IT slash content intro. Um, this is where you can just uh, look at the slides as I'm presenting them. And also, you can, you can take notes for yourself, they are private. At the end, uh, this thing it will send you a presentation in a PDF along with your notes. So if you want to take notes and you'll find something that is uh, interesting to take notes. It also will, uh, I will ask you questions during the presentation and you will vote with your phone. So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a small game, actually. It's uh, that important. Um, so the actual presentation is about um, a project. Um, it's called Contenda, and it makes your content happy because it doesn't have any presentation. It's not modeling, as we were saying before. Um, no, but, but really, um, just uh, to get a few lines about uh, me, I've been kind of obsessed. Well, maybe not obsessed, but passionate about having the couple group and um, I am the API first initiative co-lead um, along with the leaders. I wrote the RESTful module, the JSON API module, the simple auth module and you know I like writing modules for this problem and um, I really like it. So the couple group of um, like uh, in two sentences is you have a web server, it's Drupal, you manage your content there, you build your content model there, and then you have an array of consumers that you can access that content there. Uh, so you can interact with it. You don't just read, but you can also write and authorize and uh, do all the cool stuff that Drupal lets you do. Uh, so I've been doing that a lot, uh, and uh, it's all open source and public. Uh, you will see, you were probably already thinking, well, that text is too small. Uh, this is, it's because um, I want to share this presentation and this, so people can use it offline. In this session, you don't need to read the small text. You just listen to me, if you will. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so all the people at home then will just download the presentation and not have to listen to me, but just that. Uh, so, Contenta is just, it's the couple Drupal, it's nothing else, it's not a product, it's not a um, website, it's not a nothing. It's like just purely a collection of Drupal modules and some configuration and some examples and best practices. So the idea is that you can, uh, with Contenta, you can build decoupled experiences, digital experiences, way faster and easier than you would in, like, if you were left alone in the world with, right, with uh, link, download Drupal, and start working on yourself. Um, so this is basically the idea. It is also, um, a distribution, like all this concept of uh, several modules with configuration, and uh, like we kind of selected the things that uh, we thought it, that were important to share, and uh, and that's called the distribution. That's what Dan was talking about a little bit earlier. If you were here in that session, um, we kind of follow that that model. Um, so, uh, uh, like just. This yes or no, if you're following along, I don't know if you have that in your phone. Have you tried um, the couple Drupal in the past? And if you, in, like in any sense, like maybe you build uh, some widgets that you put in another website or in your own website, or you go when fully decoupled and build um, an app. And how do I show my answers in here? Okay. I will get the answers. Um, if you, you respond, um, uh, so a little bit of story. Uh, we got here in the at this point of building Contenta through a lot of effort from the community, and uh, this started like way back in January of 2012. Uh, some people started the project. Uh, they called 
Consulting Services. Uh, probably you have used it because uh, it was immensely popular uh, in Drupal 6, uh, Drupal 7, uh, not as much in Drupal 8 because Drupal 8 had you know, different things. Um, they started like providing some remote procedural calls, uh, which means that they had something prepared, cooked in the Drupal backend, and they were waiting for a request to say, hey, execute that code. Uh, and then they added REST, services REST, which kind of added REST capabilities to, to Drupal, um, to have resources, etc. And uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, then, uh, fast forward in a little bit in time, uh, in May 2014, um, I uh, was at Drupal Camp Valencia and uh, Amitai. Uh, from Israel, uh, he got to me and he said, hey, I have this project and you will be super excited about it. And uh, then he called me by the, by the wrong name and uh, we became immediately friends. And, uh, we started collaborating on, on that. Uh, this was the first attempt to introduce best practices on modern API techniques in, in Drupal. There were other things that happened before that and uh, honestly, most of the stuff that we worked on, on RESTful, the first version of it, was based on REST WS, which is not here, uh, it's a little bit unfair, but my slide template only had like three of these. So, uh, now, uh, I just wanted to highlight it in, in words. Um, so, the idea was that we wanted to introduce uh, this thing that we found in our experience that was really hard to do with the existing solutions, which is resource embedding to, uh, to avoid multiple requests to the, to the backend. So to improve performance, uh, there are known solutions that uh, were not applied in Drupal models. Uh, so we made an, an attempt to, to fix that. And then in parallel, in 2013, the end of 2013, beginning of 2014, uh, resting core was like for Drupal 8, because uh, RESTful 1 was for Drupal 7 only. Um, by that time, RESTful 4 was like full push. Uh, many things were happening. The routing system uh, was changing under the feed. Uh, a lot of stuff got committed, and much of what we have today happened back then. Uh, then it went like in freeze mode for a long time, and now it's kind of uh, you know bootstrapping again. We're finding some, some issues to, to work on. But a lot of the work that we have today, it was already like in advance, it was pretty advanced, um, I would say. Um, someday I said, uh, this is not flexible enough, uh, RESTful is not flexible enough, and I started working on RESTful 2. It was like uh, around summer 2015. I didn't have a kit back then, so I could do, you know, this hacked code. Uh, open source style, and um, and the idea of that was that we wanted to make things very flexible in the sense that uh, we wanted a resource embedding, but we wanted the client to be able to specify it too, because we found in some projects that it's not cool that you bake that in the server, and you know maybe that Android application doesn't need that feature, uh, but maybe the iOS does. Uh, and you know, we wanted to simplify a little bit the, the things, um, and then we worked on a JSON API. So that happened. I remember that the first commit of that happened in a plane in between uh, Mallorca and New Orleans for for DrupalCon, and uh, we were very excited because when I got there, it was someone else that had already written the full one, and. Um, we then collaborated, merged efforts. I had one part here, uh, some, some other parts, and uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. It was a very uh, community-inspiring moment uh, where you know two people get together and say, what, you can do my thing? And, and we merged it. Um, so uh, finally, we get to the next American TripleCon, and uh, people start like, no, 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 we need the distribution for all this. This is too hard to figure out for someone that gets, you know, new to the community, and they need something that you can give them, and it's a starting point. 
And that is when we uh, started this project uh, called Contenta. Like, all this to say that Contenta be builds on a lot of code that was built in the past, but mostly in a lot of experience on, on frustration, on finding what needs to be fixed and how uh, we have to fix it. And just you know, sharing that with, uh, with the community in a way that is kind of easy to easy to consume. So this is you know built by people. Uh, there are actual people doing these things, and um, many of them are here. Uh, so uh, you probably know Christina. Christina makes this uh, whole event happen. Um, and uh, if you like the logo, it's it's because Christina made it. And uh, she she also made a lot of cool UX stuff. Um, Sally, uh, she's a um, a worker of mine. She's like this incredibly talented uh, developer. Uh, she's not all that much into Drupal nowadays because uh, she is doing like wizard things with React and all things JavaScript. And she was like, "Oh yes, I'm gonna build a React application for this content project." Um, so uh, yeah, she's, she's helping out. Um, Daniel is like our resident genius that knows all things period, uh, and Drupal included, and, um, and yeah, and then there's me, I talked about me already. Um, but, but that is not it, that's not the full story, because there's a lot of people that are helping. Um, we have a Slack channel, I will talk about, about that later, um, and it's like, it's like this thing, it's, it's community driven. Uh, we are just some people that want to help each other because this, we know the effects of open source and uh, it benefits everyone, including us, I guess. So, um, and we, this is the thing, like everyone that wants to get involved uh, gets a say in what happens in the project. Um, and what is this project? What are we trying to achieve, right? Um, so, the, it can be summarized in four different points. Um, and again, don't try to read the, the small type. Um, but it's basically trying to, one, be uh, something that is easy to use for someone that is new to Drupal, in the sense that we are building a distribution or something that is for decoupling the Drupal backend and a uh, so collection of frontends. What if I am uh, just, uh, well, just an Angular developer? Like if that wasn't uh, difficult enough, right? Um, if I want to build this with Drupal, I need to learn Drupal first, how to put, uh, how to install the Drupal site, how to put it together, how to install modules, which modules to install. Uh, that should be easy, right? There's only five billion modules in Drupal that are. Um, then I need to uh, know how they work together, how to configure them, and th that is not easy for someone that comes with Angular, from Angular and just wants to click something because they know that Drupal has this very good experience with content <coughs> modeling and building your content out, right? And um, so we want to make that easy for them. Uh, another of the, of the points of our, our mission is that it needs to be ready from the moment that you start. And uh, that means that you install it and you use it. And that's our goal. Uh, have you ever installed Drupal? I assume you have, right? And what do you get when you install Drupal? You get a blue banner and the page that says there's no content. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess that someone at some point joked about putting uh, there's no content, fuck off. And find your way in. Um, so the idea is that we kind of avoid that path and we can do it because we are targeting a limited domain of things that you can do with Drupal. Drupal cannot do it because you, know, you can do anything with Drupal. But we can because we are targeting the couple of people. So since we can, we, uh, we aim to do it as part of our mission. Um, also, we want uh, to have good documentation, but not inside documentation, but rather a collection of links that people can, uh, can look at. 
And uh, finally, uh, and this is, I would say, that probably the most important part. Um, it's feature complete in the sense that we're leveraging the whole experience in the industry that we that we have. And um, some people come in and say, "Hey, I have, I had this weird use case in, in the past um, for app deep linking, and uh, this would not work if we did it this way or this other, right?" So. These are the things that uh, we include in the distribution, so that you don't have to figure out. Uh, and it's easier to go in there and see what's there and what you don't need, than to go to the internet and find what you do need. Right? Um, or that's what we think. So, uh, like expanding a little bit more on, on those, I, I know I already touched on this, but um, the idea is that you forget that this that this is built on top of Drupal because uh, the Drupal complexity is a little bit hidden from you uh, in, in the sense uh, that uh, there is one installation command like uh, there's, a, there's a video of how you can do it uh, it takes some time because it's composer based composer is not super fast uh, if you want to speed it up you just learn that you can use Prestissimo but, um, but it's a single command and uh, you just run it and after you're done, you have a JSON API server ready. You have a, an OAuth uh, authentication-based uh, system that you can use, and you can have also a simplified backend app. And the last line is still and nowadays it's a lie. We have a, a very complex backend admin, the Drupal backend admin, uh, but we aim to simplify it. Uh, so I put it in the slides, uh, so maybe someone can help with that. Um, but that's that's the mission. That's what we that's what we want to do. It's not necessarily where where we are now, right? So the idea to forgetting about Drupal is to build on top of standards because that uh, that Angular developer that came, they may know about JSON API because it's a standard and they used it in some Ruby based project. Uh, OAuth 2 is like everywhere and they know it. So they, all they know is that they run a script and it installs something and they have JSON API, OAuth and all this standard technology, uh, Open API, etc. Et so they just interact with it. Uh, and uh, again, uh, the complexity is a little bit hidden from there, but they still have the full power of Drupal underneath if they need to expand on, on what it's providing. Um, it is ready from the first minute, and this is very, uh, this is very exciting because uh, um, there is um, a lot of content that ships with the distribution. Because uh, what good is it to you, um, a JSON API server that you can get data from and push data to, if you cannot interact with data because there's no data, right? The idea is that you install it and you start using it. If you need to go there and type some content to see, oh, I typed this, and then, oh, it's there, nice. Uh, instead, we create like more than 200 recipes, uh, and it's like a complex data model uh, with uh, the ingredients, the different steps, the media that goes with it, etc., etc., and uh, it's there for you to you know, start playing. And uh, that's the idea: that you install it and you start playing. And then when you're done, uh, one click and everything's gone. It's clean, so you can start clicking. Just. So um, that's the other idea. Uh, the, what we call the Knowledge Hub is just a collection of links that people send us, or that I hope that people will start sending us. Uh, and the idea is that it's this Drupal thing is based on modules, right? And each module has their documentation in different standards and different places, and uh, it's hard sometimes to find all the pieces uh, to get a topic together, right? So the idea is that you put a page with a collection of links that are relevant to the domain, and, and that's pretty much what the, the, this knowledge hub is. Um, and uh, again, uh, it's built by, by the community. 
So it's not like we have to uh, go and type it inside of the project. You type it in your blog and you tell us, hey, look what I built. Would you uh, include it into the distribution? And we'll go, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of the, the thing. So um, there are many ways that you could present a project. Um, we have found that in pretty much all of the all the developer projects that we are involved, you need some kind of asset management, for instance, uh, and media is there for that. Uh, we know that we that you will that you will lose a couple of hours saying why is it no, not working, and it's because of course, and uh, we fix that for you in the configuration and all this, all this stuff. Um, so the challenges that you will find, or some of the challenges that you will find, are already solved. Um, you will ship it with um, a lot of Drupal modules configured in such a way that are friendly for your, for your, for your clients or for your own project. So what, what is it uh, that you know, you're excited about? You like documentation. Uh, you can vote, but you know that I, I don't know how to show the results. So. I guess I can just skip it. Um, so this is the this is boring. Like we're done with the Drupal part, and now we're gonna get to the to the exciting part. And and this actually gets me excited. I I get I get sweaty when I think of it. Um, so we we got uh, together with. Um, out of the box content initiative, and um, Christina is pretty involved with, with them. And the idea was that uh, you know that page that I said about that it's a blue banner with there's no content. Um, they're trying to fix that because uh, it is actually a problem. And uh, they're building a distribution that will show how the the theme system works, etc. And I'm probably misrepresenting that. Uh, if you have questions about that, ask Christina. Um, but uh, they came up with this idea of building a recipe magazine project, and uh, because of many things, like it shows really well structured content, it shows shows really well how you can build complex layouts, and uh, they were kindly enough to build also wireframes. So we thought, what if this content that we want to ship with, that is uh, example content, so people can install and start playing. What if we use the same thing that they uh, wanted to use? So we collaborated, uh, we kind of gave uh, our ideas, we created the uh, automatic migrations to import content, etc. <coughs> so the target is that uh, we can build examples of consumers for that API in all of the technologies possible in, in the world. So that's the vision, right? Uh, that's not enough. But, uh, the idea is that we could build that and uh, follow these wireframes, the same things. So you can have uh, like a, a fair comparison of the of the different projects uh, in maybe in the, to build the same project, uh, maybe in Angular and also in React, and then you can see how the best practices are in in each one of the of the technologies. Uh, and I mean, I didn't expect this. And we had React like that, Sally was gonna work on it, but then people got excited. And uh, Matt and Joao collaborated in writing an Angular content. Uh, there was uh, Sam that started working on an Ionic project. Uh, Daniel, you worked on Elm. And a chatbot, it's pretty cool. You are hungry and you say, um, hey, what should I eat tonight? And it goes to your content installation, looks at a recipe that is started for dinner, and then it gives you a suggestion. And maybe you can answer, uh, I don't like that. And it gives you another recipe. Um, we have also Jan working on Vue.js. Uh, we have Pedro, work, Pedro Camera working on building a Docker uh, container for, for all this. Uh, we have Chris Hamper building an um, Ember JS consumer and uh, it's like I, I didn't expect all these people to get passionate about this and the thing is that 
someone, some of these people were waiting for this distribution to happen because they wanted to share what their passion is and for some of them it's uh, creating a novel in Angular and uh, they wanted to collaborate with others and find out what is the best way to uh, from this project. But for you, the important part is that you, when you are building your decoupled project, uh, maybe you need to build um, Android app, and you decide that Ionic is a good framework for you, uh, then you just go install your content server and with the one command thing, and then you download the Ionic example and see, oh, so this is how they talk uh, to each other, and this is how you create a, a listing, and this is how you uh, actually go to a detail page, and then you use that as a guideline, and you extrapolate the recipe website and use it as a guideline for your for your own project. And this is this is the huge win of the project. It gives you an overview from the end to the end and you have the whole experience because with the couple Drupal, what it often happens is like uh, well, I gave you your JSON document my job is done, right? this is what uh, you hear in the couple presentations especially mine um, so this is the, this is the full uh, content experience as I see in my head so you first download it and um, you play with the API, maybe you make some requests, uh, you read some recipes, you filter to, to get um, maybe only things for breakfast, or maybe only things that you can prepare in less than 25 minutes. Um, and once you're done, you go and download the consumer, the one that you like. Uh, React is pretty cool. And you download that, and you see how it actually looks and how it's talking to the to the backend. You see that it has universal rendering, um, whatever that thing is that uh, they do in the browser. I only deliver JSON documents, and uh, you see all these features and uh, get you know excited about your new project because it's uh, it's going to be pretty cool. You're going to work on a React application. Um, then you. Probably read to the documentation if you if you need to. Uh, there's a lot of relevant documentation in, uh, in there. And <coughs> finally, you're ready. You know your stuff. You know what you're going to do. You know that uh, you're going to use these modules. You know that you're going to use this front technology to build your your application. So finally, you say, okay, I don't want any of these recipe things or the configuration that it comes with. So you click one button and you revert it to, to clean, like like if it was a new installation. Um, and then you actually put together your content. And, uh, well, actually, you put together your content model, and then you create your content. Um, so you put some, some fields, and it's, it's there. The idea is there, and your example, well, you need to do it to adapt, because you're not doing recipes anymore, probably. Maybe you are doing a real estate site, and you're selling houses, and you need to put the number of rooms of that house, etc., etc. And that is exposed to the API, and then uh, you can ask a chatbot, where should I move? Um, I didn't really want to talk about this, this slide, but there was a, a project um, that Apria released. It's called Reservoir, and um, after talking uh, with, her, with them, uh, at the beginning, we were a little bit uh, sad that this happened, like this duplication of effort. We wish that we, we had collaborated from the start. But, uh, but then uh, things you know, uh, got made a little bit more sense in, in the sense that they are building on the same blocks that we're building. They are also providing a JSON API server. They are also providing uh, an auth to authentication system. And they are also providing uh, documentation for your API using OpenAPI. Um, and what they realized is that during this time that they were developing this, they had been sending the patches for all these modules, a lot of them, uh, and they were actually good patches. So the collaboration had already happened, in, in fact. So the, that feeling kind of uh, got a, a little bit better. But 
Um, after talking with them, we realized that it comes down, the difference between the two projects, it comes down to what we consider that clean state that I was talking about before. Um, so that's why I say that um, aqueous reservoir could be a replacement for our stage five if you were to go down that route. Um, reservoir doesn't touch any of the other five stages, like uh, stage one, two, three, uh, four, and six. Uh, uh, they didn't do. But they focus instead on the stage five, uh, which is uh, getting you uh, decoupled distribution, a decoupled backend that is simple to use, and uh, they go for simplicity in the sense that they only support nodes, users, and files. And that's it. They don't have plans uh, that I know of to support or stuff. If your project will always only need those, then using the Aqua Reservoir is you know, a perfectly good solution. I mean, in the end, you're using the same two components. In the end, you're using two. Um, if, you, if you have instead other needs in your project, uh, like having a media library or uh, having, you know, having to support paragraphs, um, which I'm not sure is a good idea for a decoupled, uh, for a decoupled architecture. But sometimes it does make sense. Um, and what I'm getting at is that obviously the contented people think that uh, you will need more stuff than just nodes, files, and users. Um, because that's our spirit. Um, but, but yeah, Aquila Reservoir is like a very similar solution and it provides, um, it provides that value. <laughs> so now I can see your basics. Um, especially in that that you want to get involved. And uh, so how do you actually do it? And uh, what would you do if you got involved? So we, we just, we just some nerds that hang, hang out in, in Slack and talk about these kind of problems. Uh, the other day there was an epic uh, discussion about, uh, about routing and it, it was really productive. And uh, we started like from way different angles, and we came into the agreement of uh, yeah, let's build a model. It was actually the, the summer. Um, if you want to come and join uh, the content channel in Drupal Slack uh, for the conversation, I think it's I think it's worth it. Or uh, to me, it feels like I'm, I'm learning stuff. Um, and if you have an idea of you of what you want to collaborate. I mean, uh, maybe you are very passionate about front-end technology. Um, maybe you are a very good writer. Uh, we have probably needs of help of everything. Like uh, our, if you go to contentcms.org, the content that's there is not super great. So we could uh, get help with that and. Um, um, maybe you want to build another consumer. That's another example for the, for the for the community. If you know Drupal as a developer, uh, we can get help in you know building some features in making the admin uh, experience be better. Uh, if you think uh, the help pages can can help uh, can use some theming as well, because uh, you saw just a static slide that looks uh, kind of good. Uh, but it's not all that great uh, at the moment. So we can get help if you want, uh, if you want to feel this sense of, of community and you know uh, help us help uh, everyone. Uh, that would be that would be great. And if you don't know what you could be doing, just ask. Uh, sometimes you, you know you don't realize that uh, your DevOps skills could be of I need for us. Like uh, I was struggling. I skipped one night of sleep because I couldn't figure figure out how to do continuous deployment in uh, a Pantheon site using Circle CI and using Composer and all the stuff. Because I usually don't do it. Uh, so uh, if someone said, "Hey, I do this," um, it would have been great and probably would work better. Uh, 
And, and yeah, so uh, the idea uh, that a disease made by the community for the community is that this is not the sales piece, right? This is uh, just some people helping other people. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah, it's like across this wall, but downstairs. <laughs> 